स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया In this video, we will look at ResNet. So, in the previous videos, we've looked at uh, AlexNet, Lanet, as well as VGG. Now, those layers, for instance, uh, AlexNet had seven layers. VGG had sixteen weight layers, and if you include max pooling, there are about three or four max pooling layers in it as well. As well as, and if you look at Inception, at twenty-two layers. so they are much deeper they as you see that they uh, the, the depth seems to increase as you if you uh, if you look at the progression so alexnet was 7 vgg was uh, 16 or 19 inception was 22 they had other uh, versions which are much deeper as well so now we we come to this part resnet where resnet was different from the networks we have seen so far is that the number of layers here just uh, uh, increased dramatically so these networks had like 30 50 or up to 152 layers and there are reports of 1000 uh, layer rest nets being trained okay so what is the uh, principle and of course the rest net was the winning entry to the uh, image net recognition challenge 2015 uh, giving rise to a error top five error of less than 4% about 3.6% better than humans human error rate top five is 5.1% approximately so resnets where we, where the networks which which we really tried out with uh, very very deep networks in terms of number of layers then they even really deep as far as 150 152 layers like i said about 1000 layers as well for several applications now why what is the motivation behind this network in terms of uh, what is the observation that they had before they went to uh, went create this model okay so the paper reports the following So uh, they they trained deep networks on CIFAR 10 data. So there is a 20 layer network. So this is the training error for the uh, 20 layer network, and this is the, the yellow is the training for the 56 layer network. Okay. Similarly for the test error. So the test error for the uh, So what is shown here are two plots. So this uh, plots correspond in training and test error for networks trained with the CIFAR R10 database. So uh, what are shown here are two plots: the training and test error for uh, networks trained with uh, CIFAR R10 database. And if you see the one in the yellow is the one corresponds to the 20 layer network, the curve in the yellow. and the red one corresponds to a 56 layer network this is for training similarly for the testing the lower test corresponds to 20 layer this one corresponds to 56 layer the problem with this picture is that the general wisdom says that as you go deeper your error training and test error should improve because your representations are supposed to become better and you need to better separability among classes so on and so forth because the non-linearity non, non -linearity is also increased as you go deeper however practically this seems to be a problem because um, generally there doesn't it doesn't seem to work that way as you go deeper there are issues with uh, with the uh, air test training and testing error so now what what is the what is the reason behind this okay the reason behind this is that this the there is a problem with the gradient flow so the weights as you go deeper and deeper vanishing gradient problem is there okay vanishing or exploding gradient problems is there and so that is not alleviated and so it's an optimization problem basically and so as you go deeper optimizing a larger net deeper network becomes harder so to to get over this problem they uh, the resnet paper introduces something called skip connections okay so these skip connections are basically identity mapping so then since the network just a replication we'll see what that means in the next slide so they provide an alternate pathway for the gradients to flow and make makes training possible and for the image net challenge they manage to train up to 152 layer network of course the number of parameters also sometimes increases with this kind of approach as you go deeper you have more layers so 
So, what is the uh, principle behind which the residual networks work? So, if by construction you can do the following, we know that the shallow network seems to work well. So, we use the weights of the shallow network to construct a much deeper network and wherever we have gaps we just do identity connections, okay. we have identity mappings. So, this is just by construction, but for of course, for a, the real networks are constructed from scratch by backprop. But so, the general idea is that you know if you have a deeper network its training and testing error should not be higher than that of the shallower network that is that is a, a intuition behind this. So, they the way they approach this is to have skip layer. So, we just it is illustrated here. So, for instance these are two convolution layers that say okay, they take as input a bunch of feature maps x okay, and the output is the output we will denote as h of x. Okay. So, in addition to the output what is also done in the rest net is that the input is copied here to the output. Okay. So, we have we are skipping two layers of con two convolution layers and the input to the to this particular convolution layer 1 is copied to the output of the convolution layer 2. Okay. So, you are output So, your output h of x is actually f of x plus x. Okay. So, how does this help in any way? So, instead of learning h of x you learn the residual. So, basically you are trying to learn. Okay. So, the worst case scenario if you do not learn if the weights are not updated at all it is everything is a very small or 0 value you will at least learn x. So, that is the idea. So, just at least so the gradient uh, flow happens. So, that is the and the residual in this case that is why it is called learning the residual. The residual in this case in most cases we would expect it to be small because the idea is that um, every layer only slightly perturbs your input. So, whatever you have to learn is a very small perturbation of your input. So, uh, so your so your residual will be much smaller. Okay. So, this is the principle behind uh, doing uh, this skip connections. The authors also show in their paper um, and there are presentations available online which show that the gradient update step is additive. So, and, and it is not multiplicative. So, the additive gradient step leads to actual updates to your weights and so it does not there is no vanishing gradient problem. Okay. That is also explained by the authors. So, for the rest net used in the image net challenge um, there is no explanation given in the paper, but typically by skipping as we saw earlier skipping two layers at a time the skip connections are two layers at a time uh, you are able to get uh, pretty good results or very state of the art results is less than 4 percent error rate on the image net database using the residual networks. So, the network itself uh, using the residual networks uh, the network itself varied from 30 odd layers to 152 layers. So, basically you would alternate uh, this again very similar to VGG they used only 3 by 3 convolution across all the layers um, and you would subsampling was done by uh, either max pooling layer at the beginning or the end and by just by striding convolutions. Um, and, and for very deep networks they also introduced the bottleneck concept in some in some cases. So, you would have a so in this case you would have for some of the networks they had bottleneck wherein they had a 1 cross 1 you have a 3 cross 3 and followed by a 1 cross 1. Okay. So, that was for every instead of every 3 cross 3 layer you would have this one. So, a 3 cross 3 layer would be uh, replaced by this kind of a bottleneck module for some of the deeper networks. So, that the number of computations is kept sustainable. Okay. So, as I, as I mentioned earlier this showed about 3 about less than 4 percent error rate on the image net challenge and and the skip the skipping layers the skip layer connections is used now uh, in many in, in most modern implementation of all CNNs. Uh, just to clarify it is actually an addition. So, you would take feature maps as input from uh, as I say in this case you take the input from here let us say there are C feature maps 
and you take them and add them to the output of this 3 by 3 convolution this particular convolution. Now, it is possible that the output convolutions here the number of feature maps here are different let us say this is C 1 feature maps and typically C 1 greater than C. So, you would have to choose C feature maps to which to add ok. So, that is again a heuristic left to the uh, person making the neural network and also you can of course, you can ask can we skip more can you skip 3 or 4 uh, the uh, ResNet people who develop ResNet seem to think that 2 layers at a time works best ok. It seems like a heuristic at this point. So, so far uh, this is a summary of what we have seen so far ok. Uh, Linet 5 we saw was a basic one of the earliest networks which I mentioned earlier um, had a sequence of convolution and pooling layers which is still followed today. AlexNet top 5 error rate on ImageNet is 15.3 percent, VGG 16 had 7.3 percent error again all of them are ensembles ok not one network ensemble of results. Uh, ResNet had top 5 percent or 3.6 percent like I said it is better than human raters. Um, of course, uh, inception Google inception has better one than better than VGG or the same order of magnitude. This is a number of parameters there are very high number of parameters these two are comparable, but of course, this ResNet was much much deeper you see AlexNet had 60 million parameters for 7 layers for so ResNet about 52 layers or so 150 a very very deep network and uh, many order uh, multiple times the number of layers in AlexNet. So, in this case at least 52 to 152 ok. So, that has still had only 65 million parameters ok. So, very deep network, but with compare number of parameters to a relatively I mean comparatively shallow network in AlexNet. So, this is the uh, progression uh, so far in terms of the results on the ImageNet challenge ok. So, we will look at one more network called dense nets in the subsequent video.